Hey guys, DJ Space Dude here, back in it with another video. This time reviewing the Korg DP-3000C digital piano. Alrighty, so luckily from Korg themselves, I was able to find the manual online. There's a lot of nice information about the beauty herself. Another site here, uh, usedprice.com said it was from 1986 to 1993. So somewhere between there. According to a uh, music gear review, Bob Palmer said that he bought this for about $1,200. I'm assuming that is meaning back when it came out. So adjusted for inflation, pretty nice expensive, expensive guy we got here. Bob also mentions that this keyboard is heavy, which is a very polite understatement. According to a blog on Piano World, Steven says that it cost $2,000 new in 1987. On some forums I'm reading here say they've seen them for two, three hundred dollars. So they definitely dropped in price. Looking online though, it doesn't look like it's very common. In fact, I can't find another one. Yeah, that's about all I've found. Um, if you guys happen to find anything else about this, any more information about its year release or how much it was or more interesting backstory or history about it, please leave a comment, let us all know. This 88 key weighted pop piano is a beast. The keyboard itself can be detached from the stand, albeit with much brute force and heavy lifting. But if you want to skip a day at the gym, just carry this thing around for five minutes. It also comes with its own cool looking stand. It comes with two speakers, make you turn it up over the TV playing in the other room or just rock the house. On the stand of the keyboard, it comes with two pedals. Very nice feeling, very nice looking. Come all the way up here, through a, wired through a cord, and through here. And they're just individual jacks that can just fit in any one of these and you can customize them however you would like. On the back of the DP3000C, it has this unique power cord, which I both love and hate. All the way over here, you have a contrast knob, which just changes the brightness on the screen in the front. You have MIDI through, out, and in. Foot switch pedals, custom to a damper, soft. I believe this is for switching programs and that one is as well. You also have a line in and then left and right outputs and then an option to turn on or off the speakers on the keyboard itself. You also have this slot here for inserting um, any cards with additional sounds. Um, I found a couple of these on sale online, but unfortunately I do not have any myself. There's nothing too interesting on the front, except that you have your power button here. And then on the other side, all the way over here, is an awesome touch where they incorporated a headphone jack. On the face of the DP3000C, starting over here, you have your master volume, and then you have an EQ section with your bass, middle, and treble, which is very nice. You also have an effects rack with a chorus one and chorus two. Both are just enacted by pressing the light. Unfortunately, you can't press both at the same time, just one or the other. You also have a sequencer, which allows you to have two tracks recording at the same time. You could also play and stop those, reset those, merge those for different things. You also have over here a metronome, which you could turn on, tempo, and obviously volume, which is fun, I guess. Much like a DX7, you have this value editor, which when you customize things on the end over here, this just is that switch for you to switch what's on the screen. Obviously, you have your simple display here. Then over here, you have modes to parameter select, which is programming for um, additional sounds or detunes or pitching or whatever else you got. Um, you have the selection for that. You can do the upper and lower of the keyboard where either you can have it split from playing a sound here versus a sound down there or having two sounds play at the same time. Over here you have the sound select which enables you to play what's ever on here. Like if I wanted to play the organ two, 
you go down here, organ two, organ two is up, and then you, there it is. Although the DP3000 has 30 instruments, I really only prefer eight of them. And they're the first eight on here. The first four being the pianos, and then the next four being the electric pianos. So here's the sound of piano one. Piano two. Piano three. And piano four. The chorus effects also really enhance the sound as well and give it a lot nicer of a feel. Here's chorus one. Without. You also have chorus two. Then you have the electric pianos. So this is the first one. Number two. Number three. And my favorite instrument on this keyboard, E Piano 4. It has a really nice attack that comes after you play the keyboard that I think really enhances the sound. Hey guys, after fooling around with the Korg piano for a hot minute, I realized that it sounded awfully similar to another instrument. An instrument none other than the Holy Grail itself, the Yamaha DX7. Just as a quick disclaimer, I'm not comparing these as instruments, as I understand that they were both manufactured and designed for different purposes. Rather, I'm just analyzing the sounds that they produce. Alrighty, I'm just gonna go down the list here. Starting off with the first sound on the Yamaha DX7, you have the preset flute one. Or not. Alrighty, so you have the preset flute one on the DX7. A little similar, not, not too close. Then you have the harpsichord. Versus the harpsichord on the DP3000. The strings on the DX7. And then you have the strings on the DP3000C. Ugh. Ugh. Don't even compare. You have the classic brass horns preset on the DX7. Versus the brass you have on the DP3000C. <laughs> Korg also has an E Piano 1 labeled the exact same thing on the DX7. Here's the Korg. And the DX7. Just gotta go with the DX7. Piano one on the DX7. Piano one on the Korg. Very similar. Electric organ one on the DX7, 
organ one on the Korg. A little different. <laughs> Almost identical. The fretless one on the DX7 and the bass one on the Korg. It's fascinating how little the Korg has to offer versus synthesizers and other keyboards like the DX7. From my perspective, I don't really see why I get this instrument. It's big, it's a tank. Um, it's much too big to be just used for a MIDI keyboard. For example, I have a Fatar Studio 90 weighted MIDI keyboard. And although there's nothing special about this keyboard, it is still narrower and lighter than the Korg. Why build something like this in a home setting where you sit down and you expect to play a piano? That just doesn't sound like a piano. Um, kind of perplexes me. If you see these things for sale for $200, $300, why get something like this? if you can pay a couple hundred more bucks and get something authentic like a DX7. The customability ranges from an equalizer and effects and a sequencer, and that's all you have. And the sequencer is nothing to be proud of because in our technology today, you can have so many more things for that. Although the chorus effects are nice and the equalizer adds for something more, all of this can be replaced and added with something so much newer with the technology we have today. And with all that in mind, it's safe to say that this thing did not age well. I have been blessed by Jonald and his family for them lending this to me to review. I still think it is a fascinating keyboard and there are some unique features about it. I think for somebody looking to practice on a keyboard in a living room and this is what they come up with, I think it's great. I think it's a good thing to learn piano on and to practice with. If I saw this for sale somewhere, I honestly don't know if I'd pick it up. With the performance it gives, it's just not valuable to me. If you guys have a different opinion, or if you guys have something else to share or more information on this, please let me know. Because again, I only know what I've shared with you. Um, if you have something more, please let us know. I wish I could like this thing. I wish it would be something that I could say, yeah, this is really cool. But to me, it's formatted like a DX7 concert piano. Alrighty guys, well that was a brief review of the Korg DP3000C. As always, if you guys have anything you'd like to share or any thoughts, please leave them in the comments. Please guys, do the things. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification, and as always, hit the dislike button. Because unless you have special software, we can't see it anyway. Thank you guys for watching and for staying until the end. And I will see you all in the future. Stay awesome.